Chamomile tea is one of my favorite medicinal preparations, but if you aren't careful, you can get some unwanted chamomile tea side effects. In this episode, I'm sharing my best chamomile tea recipes, plus how to get the most chamomile tea benefits from this powerful remedy. Hello, and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. Chamomile, Matricaria chamomilla, is like having an entire apothecary at your fingertips. While many people are familiar with it as a common after-dinner tea, there's so many more benefits to chamomile. I reach for chamomile to soothe an upset tummy, to relieve stress and tension, and even to promote sleep. In fact, there's so many chamomile benefits that I've already created an entire episode for you. It's called Chamomile Plant Benefits. So if you haven't seen that or listened to it yet, check it out after this episode. In that episode, I show you exactly how to identify chamomile, Matricaria chamomilla, and how you can make your own chamomile infused oil. This episode is all about making the best chamomile tea recipes. Chamomile is easily one of my favorite herbs in herbal teas, and I'm excited to share my best tips for getting an excellent chamomile tea for a variety of situations. Do you have experience with chamomile tea? I'd love to hear about it in the comments on YouTube or on the official podcast page, herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Your comments mean a lot to me, and I love cultivating a community of kind-hearted, plant-loving folks. Plus, it's always interesting and insightful to hear the experiences of plant lovers out there. And you never know, your suggestion may also help others. Okay, the first thing we need to discuss before making our tea is chamomile tea side effects. I wish everybody could enjoy chamomile tea. It's delicious, calming, and is a wonderful tea for particular ailments. Or you can simply enjoy it. That's good medicine. But chamomile tea isn't for everyone. Chamomile is part of the aster family, one of the largest plant families. One study showed that about 3% of the population has an allergic reaction to the aster family. Of those 3%, about half of them are specifically allergic to chamomile. So if you know that you're sensitive to the aster family, or if you know specifically that you've had reactions to plants within that family, such as ragweed, chrysanthemums, marigolds, or daisies, then it's best to avoid chamomile, or at least approach it very cautiously. Here's what I mean by that. You could start by simply touching the plant for a bit to see if there's any kind of contact dermatitis reaction. If not, you could gently crush the plant and smell it. See if there's a reaction. If not, you could try very little bits of diluted tea to see if there's a reaction. If not, you can increasingly try larger amounts of the tea. I do want to emphasize that chamomile is generally regarded as safe for most people. However, if you're sensitive or allergic to this plant, it can cause nausea, headaches, or an itchiness in the throat. Again, these types of reactions are uncommon, but they are a possibility. There's also some potential that chamomile could interact with drugs like warfarin and cyclosporine. So if you're taking those drugs, then it's best to avoid chamomile or work with an herbalist directly. The last chamomile tea side effect that I need to mention is something that could be both a benefit and a pain. Chamomile can be a diuretic, so it can make you pee a lot, especially when you take it in stronger amounts. So that's just something to be aware of. I would avoid drinking lots of chamomile tea just before bed, before a long meeting, or before a long road trip. How to choose the best chamomile. 
My dad used to tell me that the food recipes you make are only as good as the ingredients you use. And this couldn't be more true than for herbal medicine. If the herbs you're making tea with are old and weak, then it's gonna be tough to get a lot of medicinal benefits from them. So before we can talk about making chamomile tea recipes, we have to make sure that you have the best ingredients. While it's common to make chamomile tea from tea bags, I don't often recommend it. That's because the chamomile often found in tea bags can be very low quality. It's often simply old, or perhaps it wasn't really harvested and processed well, resulting in low quality herbal material. An easy way to avoid low quality chamomile is to buy it in loose bulk, so you can better assess the quality yourself. However, that doesn't mean that all tea bags are bad. There are a few companies out there that make great quality tea bags. I'll list some of those in the show notes. To get on my top recommended list, these companies not only have to have exceptional quality herbs in their tea bags, they're also companies that ethically source their herbs, pay a fair wage throughout the supply chain, and give back to the communities. It would be impossible for me to list all the great companies out there, so here's some tips to assess the quality of tea bags. The first is to look for a few certifications, including organic, fair trade, and possibly fair wild. These certifications, while not perfect, offer some accountability and show that the company is making strides to offer a quality product that is not only supports you and your health, but everyone involved in bringing the tea bags to you. For more about sustainable sourcing, check out my episode with Anne Armbrecht, the author of The Business of Botanicals, which is a fantastic, easy, and illuminating read that I recommend to everyone who works with herbs. Just by coincidence, that episode with Anne also focuses on chamomile, so I'm sure you'll wanna check that out. Okay, the next step is to give that chamomile tea bag a sniff. Does it smell vibrant and aromatic, or does it smell like straw? You definitely want chamomile that smells vibrant and aromatic. The same goes for assessing loose bulk chamomile. In this case, it's easier to see the chamomile with your eyes. Does it still retain a bright yellow color or is it dulled and brown? Choosing chamomile that is bright, vibrant, and delightfully strong smelling is just like choosing the best veggies at the store. Given the option, you're going to choose the deep red plump tomato, right? Not the pale wrinkly tomato. In other words, using your senses intentionally, along with a bit of common sense, and you'll get a great quality chamomile. Also, over time, as you handle more and more chamomile, you'll be able to tell just how great the quality is. So one clear advantage of buying chamomile in bulk is being able to easily use your eyes to see if the chamomile is good quality. Another benefit is that it's often a lot cheaper to buy it in bulk versus a tea bag. Having it in bulk also means that you're able to more easily choose how much chamomile that you're using. There are times when you'd be best with just a bit of chamomile and other times when the situation is best resolved with a lot more chamomile. Okay, now that I've shared about chamomile tea side effects and how to choose the best chamomile for your tea recipes, it's time to make tea. How to make chamomile tea recipes. There are so many ways to make chamomile tea recipes. In this section, I'm going to share three with you so you'll have several to choose from. The first is a simple chamomile tea, which is a great choice for maintaining health and preventing illness. This can be a great simple tea for after dinner. The second tea is a supercharged and super strong version that's best for addressing specific ailments like intense stress, pain, and supporting the fever process. And the last is a favorite herbal brand, one that I drink often at our house. To make these teas, you'll need some simple supplies. Of course, you'll need some chamomile. Hopefully you have wonderful quality chamomile. You'll need water that's clean and purified. For some of you, that may just mean well water or municipal tap water. And for others, that might mean needing to buy safe drinking water. You'll need something to boil water, something to steep the tea in that has a cover, by the way, covering your aromatic herbal teas is very important. And then a strainer to separate the chamomile from the tea. And lastly, all of these recipes can be made with your sweetener of choice. I prefer to add this at the end after the tea is done steeping. 
teas are water-based preparations and they don't have any preservatives in them. So as a result, they can spoil fairly quickly. For best results, I recommend drinking your tea the day you make it. Okay, first up is the simple tea. This preparation of a simple chamomile tea is a lovely after meal drink and can be enjoyed by people of all ages. To make this, you'll need one tablespoon of dried chamomile flowers and 12 ounces of just boiled water. To make this tea, steep the chamomile flowers in the hot water for five to 10 minutes, strain, and then add honey or your sweetener of choice if desired. You can enjoy this tea warm or cold. Our next tea is a strong chamomile tea. This variation of chamomile tea is much stronger in action than the simple chamomile tea recipe. I recommend this recipe when someone is experiencing a lot of spasmodic pain, such as back pain or menstrual cramps. I often recommend this when there's a fever accompanied by aches and pains and a headache. You'll notice that this tea has a much stronger bitter taste than the simple tea, but you'll also notice that you can really feel its relaxing and pain relieving properties. I don't recommend this tea if you have a lot of activities you need to do, it's best to rest after drinking it. To make this, you'll need a half cup or 10 grams of dried chamomile flowers and 16 ounces of just boiled water. You can steep the chamomile flowers in the hot water covered for 15 to 20 minutes, then strain, and then this strong tea does come with another chamomile tea side effect. Because this tea is so strong, you'll want to drink it very slowly. Drinking strong, bitter drinks too quickly can result in nausea. Our last tea recipe is my favorite, rest and digest tea. This is a delicious and calming blend that's a wonderful way to relax and unwind after dinner. We often drink this at our house and it's also what I reach for when we have guests. To make this, you'll need one tablespoon dried oat straw, a vena sativa, about two grams, two teaspoons dried lemon balm, Melissa officinalis, two grams, one teaspoon of dried chamomile flowers, Matricaria chamomilla, one gram, and one teaspoon of dried rose petals, which is about a gram, and a half teaspoon of dried peppermint, Mentha ex pepperita, which is less than a gram, and then a pinch of dried lavender flowers, Lavendula angustifolia. To make this, simply steep the herbs in 14 ounces of water, covered for 10 minutes, strain, add honey or your sweetener of choice if desired. With these three chamomile tea recipes, you'll be able to make chamomile tea for a variety of situations. If you're interested in learning how to make more medicinal teas from many other powerful herbs, then check out my Healing Power of Teas online course. In there, I show you how to make effective teas that actually taste good. I'll include a link for this in the show notes. Also, don't miss out on your beautifully illustrated chamomile tea recipe cards. If you're watching this on YouTube, then you can click the link in the video description, or if listening to the podcast, you can go directly to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Also in the video description and show notes, I've included other helpful links like where you can buy exceptional quality chamomile, as well as both of my books. My first book, Alchemy of Herbs, shows you how to choose the best herbs for you, and it has an entire chapter on chamomile. If you enjoyed this video on chamomile tea side effects and benefits, plus these chamomile tea recipes, and you value trusted information, then I hope you'll stick around. The best way to get started is to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. One of the best ways to retain and fully understand something you've just learned is to share it in your own words. With that in mind, I invite you to share your takeaways with me and the entire Herbs with Rosalie community. You can leave comments on my YouTube channel, on the herbswithrosaliepodcast.com show notes page, or simply hit reply to my Wednesday emails. I read every comment that comes in, and I'm excited to hear your herbal thoughts about chamomile teas. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks, and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. 
Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get a gold star and this herbal tidbit. So I shared some chamomile tea side effects earlier in this episode, which are potentially serious, but for your herbal tidbit, I wanted to share some more lighthearted side effects from my own personal experience. So as you're drinking your chamomile tea, look out for these side effects. A relaxed personality that stops to smell the roses rather than obsesses over to-do lists. Improved digestion, including less gas or bloating after meals. Less chronic inflammation and perhaps better blood sugar modulation. Lastly, a desire to grow and or store plenty of chamomile so it's never far from you, including tea bags that are found in your purse or travel first aid kit, which you whip out whenever someone around you complains of a bellyache or stress. Cheers to chamomile. <laughs>